God bless you. We'll be discussing the false prosperity gospel. Uh, I have a lot of um, information to give you, but I have to do it really short because it's only around 10 minutes I have. Uh, however, I want to share with you that a lot of the false prosperity gospel, uh, you know, a, lot, a lot of things frustrate me about it because uh, I meet people on a daily basis who are frustrated with today's church, uh, frustrated with how many churches are being ran. Notice I didn't say all churches because there's a lot of ministers out there who are doing the right thing, preaching the kingdom, uh, preaching the word of God, and uh, making sure that they do their part for the kingdom. However, there's a lot of ministers out there who aren't, and a lot of churches out there who aren't, and uh, um, that has to stop. Uh, that has to stop because uh, a lot of ministers out there are making videos, books, announcements, infomercials with different gimmicks, different ideas on how you can be successful. Uh, and the thing is that they wouldn't be there if it was for the fact that many Christians don't even read the Word of God today. Uh, ministers can get up there and say whatever they want and a lot of people accept it like nothing. That's the problem. Uh, many Christians see a book that says seven magnificent ways you can become rich. Wow, I'm buying that book for $30. Don't don't you stop and think about the fact that if God really gave that person five or six or seven ways that they can actually get rich, uh, so God gave it to them for free and they're going to sell it to you for thirty forty dollars. Think about this stuff, people. You know, it's time it, it's time that we wake up. It's time that we pick up the Word of God, the Bible, and read it. Don't just accept what the pastor's telling you. Don't just accept what your minister's telling you. Compare it to the Word of God. Don't accept what I'm telling you. Compared to the Word of God, because the Word of God is the true measurement of everything. And uh, today, I want to just read a few verses, and I hope we have a little bit of time really quick. Um, first of all, on Luke chapter 12, verse, verses from 13 through 21, uh, there's a parable there about a rich fool. And uh, basically, uh, in this story, it says like this, Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, Tell my brother to divide their inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said unto them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told him this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up for things for himself and is not rich for God. Don't you see that God has bigger things for you than money? A lot of people walk around just thinking about money. A lot of people give to church just thinking about money. A lot of these ministers, I've heard them on TV, even say work the system. Seed time harvest. Seed time harvest, work the system. I've heard them on TV. So you're basically supposed to work God? So basically now we're the ones telling God what to do? It's nonsense, people. It's lies. God doesn't work that way. You want to be blessed by God, all you have to do is read Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 34, where it talks about his disciples being worried about their clothes, about what they'll eat, about what they'll wear. And God even tells them, listen, don't worry about that stuff. If God clothes the birds, how much them, you know? And the Word of God even tells you on, on verse 31 of that same chapter, 12 of the Luke, it says, But seek the kingdom of God, and all the rest of the things will be added. So you have to ask your question today. What are you seeking? What are you seeking? Seriously. Are you seeking the kingdom of God? Are many of these ministers seeking the kingdom of God? Or all, is all their preachings is about sowing seeds and manipulation? Telling you that if you don't sow a seed, you're not going to be blessed. That's a lie of the devil, people. See, because sowing is much more than money. You can sow a seed today 
by simply giving your neighbor a hug. You can sow a seed by buying them an, an elderly member in your church who doesn't have a gallon of milk. Go buy it for her. There's a widow who's hungry. Go feed her. There's a homeless person on the corner. Buy him something to eat. But many pastors don't like for you to do that. Many ministers want you to give it to them. And you know what? Not all of them are like that. But it's time we wake up people and we start listening to the word of God people. The word of God says in Songs of Solomon chapter 2 verses 15. Catchers the foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. A lot of people worry about the big foxes. Oh I tithe. I give offerings. God has to bless me. In fact I claim that blessing. Because God has to do it. You know what? You're wrong. You're wrong because you're giving with a very bad attitude. Start giving with a good attitude. Start giving with a cheerful heart. Don't give expecting anything back from what you already have. He gave you salvation. What else do you want? Wake up, people. The prosperity gospel is no good. And it's only going to do harm to your life. Wake up. Stop supporting these ministers who do this. And if your pastor is going this route, talk to him about it. Speak up about it. Don't leave your church because of it. Speak up about it. Talk to your friends. Talk to your neighbors. Let them know the truth, the true word of God. God's not interested in your money. He's interested in you. God doesn't want 10% of your life. He wants 100% of your life. You understand that? He wants 100% of you, not your money. May God bless you. This is Neftali 1981.